It is time for the next chapter in the NHL's greatest rivalry to be written. We faced the Canadiens in the playoffs last year, and we swept them en route to winning the Stanley Cup in our first season with the Bruins. But this time, the matchup is just a little bit different. We didn't win the division title. We didn't have a great season. We only won two more games than we lost. And we've had a lot of roster turnover as well. We're dealing with injuries. It's a very, very different situation. But before we get into looking at their team, we need to look at ours because there have been some changes. Brad Marchand, Bergeron, and Pasternak will still be the top line. But the new second line is going to be Frank Vetrano, David Krejci, and Jake DeBrusque. Of course, David Backus is out to injury right now. But you look at DeBrusque's attributes. Offensively, skating-wise, he's great. It's just defensively and physically where he comes up just a little bit short at the moment. But we're going to give him a chance, unlike the Bruins in real life, where it's, hey, let's call up Seth Griffith, and then we'll put him on the fourth line instead of putting him in a position in you know a top six spot with skilled players where he actually might have a chance to succeed. That's what we're doing with DeBrusque here. He has a massive chance to succeed while David Backus is gone. Of course, when I mentioned waiver pickups and roster turnover, uh, Mika Salamaki is a great example of that. We signed Timu Palkinen just before the trade deadline. And of course, right now, due to injury, Nate Schmidt, a waiver claim, is in the lineup. This team has changed a lot. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we still have Tuka Rask, and anything is possible, in the great words of Kevin Garnett. I should note, too, uh, the Providence Bruins on their way to a playoff race. Charlie McAvoy has gone up to minor league top two. He is making some great progress and very well could be on the main team next year. But that, that is not even close to being on the agenda here. We're worried about Montreal in more ways than one. So quickly, let's take a look at their point in totals. Because obviously we can't see what they've done in the playoffs thus far because they haven't done anything. But one can assume they that their leading scorer would have more than 55 points. And yeah, that is the case. Alex Galchenyuk up to a 90 at a 75-point season. Patch ready at 63. Radulov at 60. Weber at 54. Placanich and Gallagher both broke 50. And Gallagher hit 90 as well. Holy shit. It really dropped off from there. But... Right now, we have no idea. We have no idea. Easy for me to say. We have no idea who is in their starting lineup, so let's find out. I can honestly say as well, I can honestly say, all I want, all I want is for us to win this series. If we were to lose in the second round, I'd be cool with that. Just beat Montreal. That's all I want. Two years in a row. Beat Montreal. That's all that I want. Their lineup, as I guess you would kind of expect, Pacioretty, Galchenyuk, and Radulov, the top line, their top scorers. Andrew Shaw, surprisingly, on the left wing on the second line with Plakanich and Gallagher. Stefan Matteau is in with Deharnay and Arturi Lekkinen. And De La Rose is the uh, man, English. De La Rose is with Tori Mitchell and Jason Chimera. Not too bad at all. Very well-rounded. Very well-rounded. Jeff Petrie is with Shea Weber. Sergachev is with Bolyu or Bolyu, whatever. Alsner is with Alexei Emelin. Yemelin, however the hell you want to pronounce it. He is on their third pairing with Carl Alsner. Carey Price is, of course, the goaltender. The scratched players, no injuries, but two scratches. Paul Byron. And Daniel Winnick. Maybe a bit surprising Byron's not in that lineup. But overall, this is going to be very tough. This is going to be a challenging series. There is no doubt about that. But it's time to get into this. No more stalling. Let's do this. Game 1 in Montreal. Can this team, who just had really... No shot of making the playoffs at one point. They snuck their way in. Can we pull off the upset? Let's 
find out. First period of game one, and it's a goal apiece. Radulov and Austin Zarnik with the goals. We outshot them 15-6, to six, but we only have a tie game on our hands at the moment. Second period, can we take the lead? We cannot. Okay, Max Pacioretty with the goal. They killed us in shots that period. And they made the most of it. We are down two goals to one as we start this third period. Next goal, if there is one, is oh so important. Power play from Montreal that we are able to kill off. Halfway through the third, we need a big time goal. Krejci and, pa uh, Krejci and Back has carried us in the last postseason. Post Jesus, we need Pasternak, Bergeron, Marchand. Somebody to step up is what I was trying to say as I have just stumbled over so many words already this episode. Regardless, we have dropped game one by the score of 2-1. to one. Carey Price with 30 saves. Rask, in fairness, made 35 saves. Only one goal against Carey Price. That is not the Carey Price that we wanted to run into for this series. Not one goddamn bit. But hopefully, we can turn it around. Now, players are eligible. Ah, God. That's the thing, though. Just because they're eligible doesn't mean they're fully healthy. And I'm not putting anybody in until they are fully healthy. So, Bacchus and Pelic, or Pelic will stay out. They will sit game two in what is basically a must-win for us. We need to take one of these two games on the road to start this series. And we will see if we can pull that off. Here in game two, first period, can we please get the opening goal and hold the lead? I should add, and yes, we can. Timu Polkinen and David Krejci. Not too bad. Again, Krejci and Bacchus, along with Rask, carried us to that cup last year. And Timu Polkinen making the most of his chances here as he gets the first goal of this game. We are up two to nothing, but we still have a long Long way to go. Second period. Can we maintain the lead? We can. David Krejci made it 3-0 with his second of the game. But with less than five minutes to go, Brendan Gallagher brings Montreal back to within two. It's 3-1 to one in our favor as we start the third period sim. Tuka Rask, I believe in you. I'd love to have an extra goal, though. Just to have that little bit of insurance, but it's looking like we might not need it. Five minutes to go, a gigantic power play. We couldn't do anything with it. Tori Krug gets the empty netter, and it's all good. The Bruins take game two. We have tied this series. Mission accomplished. Taking one of the first two games on the road. Tuka Rask, your first star with 33 saves. The two goals from David Krejci in a two-point night from Tori Krug. The question is, who will be fully healthy as the series shifts to Boston for games three and four? David Backus has returned. Is Pelic fully healthy or Pelic? I never someone someone will tell me down below. People always tell me if I pronounce the name wrong. Which is fine by me, because I would rather know how to say it correctly and just get it over with. But let's see here. He is not healthy. David Backus is. Now here's the thing. Palkinen, I feel like, has probably played pretty well. As Jake DeBrusque, he has a point. Uh, he only has one point. You know what? I, mean, I didn't expect him to light the world on fire in two games. But I'm going to go with Timo Palkinen, who is probably a bit more ready. So Jake DeBrusque had those two games, his first two games in the NHL. But for now, David Backus has returned. Nate Schmidt, of course, will stay in the lineup. And we are good to go once we swap those two. We just need to get DeBrusque back into the lineup. We'll actually just go best Lions for the moment. Is there anybody we need to take out? I think it's just... No, nope, Sinitian is scratched. I figured it would just be Dufek 
we will get Sinitian back into the lineup. Let's do uh, let's do something like that. That looks good. I am content with that. Defensively, we just need to make sure that McAvoy is there. We have to fix the defense as well. I should not have gone best lines, but that is okay because it gives me an extra chance here to think if I'm making the right choice. But I don't want to go through all the menus again. So David Backus has returned to the lineup. It is game three in Boston in a huge... Huge opportunity is right here for us to take the lead in this series, which would be very, very nice. First period of game three, and uh, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. Now, I said, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, I'm just, uh, I'm a little bit parched, as they say. Arnold Palmer, half and half. The best stuff on earth. I drink it like a fish. I said that that first line needed to step up. And they have stepped up in a major way. Three goals on 12 shots at the end of that first period. Bergeron gets on the board just over four minutes into it. And then late in the period, two quick goals for David Posternock. And we have a 3-0 lead but again, we have a long way to go. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Second period is scoreless. That is very good for us. Shots are close as we start the third period. We have a power play early on that we can't do anything with. Not the worst situation. We kill off a power play for Montreal. Another power play. We're just trading penalties here. But the score has not changed Tuka Rask shuts the door and shuts out the Montreal Canadiens in Game 3. Three goals in the first period, and that was enough. A three-point night from Pasta, the two points for Bergeron, and your first star with 30 saves. Tuka Rask, I told you, man, that's all we need. He is all we need. Montreal at least picked up a win in the series, and I'm not getting ahead of myself. But things are looking good for us right now. Unfortunately, the Providence Bruins lost their first game of the postseason. They are playing the Hartford Wolfpack. We will worry about them at a later time. Because we are getting into this. Perhaps Pellick was fully healthy. I maybe should have checked. But whatever. It is what it is. Game four. On home ice. Let's do this. First period, and Montreal strikes back, as you would expect, really. Alex Galchenyuk, five minutes and six seconds into this game. They doubled us up in shots. Can't disagree that they deserve to have the lead. Second period, though, is where it can all turn around, and it didn't. Arturi Lekkinen gets a very early goal. Tori Krug gets us on the board and brings us back to within one. As we go into this third period, an early power play for the Habs that we kill off. And then Shea Weber scores. Okay. That's not good. That's that's not good for us. Halfway home, power play for us that we can't do anything with. Montreal gets one of their own. We get one just trading penalties back and forth. Joe Morrow gets a goal with David. Pasternak ties it. Holy shit, that happened quick. That power play, we will. I will try like hell to remember to look at what the hell just happened. Joe Morrow and David Pasternak, 56 seconds apart. And we are going to overtime. Wow, Pasta is stepping up in a huge way. All right, overtime. It could end quickly. All right, if it, regardless... Regardless of what happens, I just hope it goes our way. I hope it's in our favor. Let's go. Overtime of this crucial game four and Alex Galchenyuk on the power play wins it for the Habs. I want to look at penalties before anything else. A Wow. Holy shit, man. 
a boarding major by Galchenyuk allows us to tie the game, and then Noah Chari takes a holding penalty, and Galchenyuk scores the winner. That's a, you couldn't write you couldn't write a story like that. Wow, three point night for Galch and Pacioretty. Joe Morrow, your third star. Hell of a game for Alex Galchenyuk goes from being the goat to the hero, and this series is tied. Unfortunately, Pelic did lose some morale for being scratched. We will try to get him back into the lineup because I am more concerned about him. Then I am Nate Schmidt, who we will, of course, probably trade. Oh, at the draft is the word I am thinking of. He has not dropped an overall yet, so that is good. We will get him into the lineup. Now, Polkinen hasn't done much since we decided to leave him in. But I believe we will keep the lines the same, and we will hope for the best. Oh, Dan, uh, I'm going to put Danton Heinen on the third line. Let's try to get that offense going. Let's try to get that offense going. And actually, let's do this. Let's do this. Solomaki, you know what? That's, that's fine. We will put Anton Bleed on the right side where he prefers to play. And we'll see if that shakeup in the bottom six can lead to some results. That second line hasn't been a great pairing, but we'll keep them together for the moment. We head back to Montreal for Game 5. A very important Game 5, as are most Game 5s. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on, we need a win here. First period, Shea Weber. Gets another goal in this series, the first and only of the first period, as they once again doubled us up in shots. Not good. But we have plenty of time to bounce back, and hopefully that starts right here in the second period, and it does. Tory Krug and Brad Marchand, two quick goals, and we have the lead heading into the third period. Let's go. Let's do this. We kill off a power play. Uh, Montreal power play very early on, and then Brad Marchand gets a goal. We have another ridiculous power play. Marshy gets another one. That must have been another major. Two goals for Brad Marchand in the third period. Tuka Rask shuts the door, and the Bruins are one win away. The hat trick for Brad Marchand. Let's look at this. Plenty of penalties. It was an elbowing major on David DeHarnay. 21 seconds later, Marchand scores. And then just at the tail end of it, Marchand scores again. Holy shit. What a performance by that top line. A four-point night for Marchand. 32 saves for Tuka Rask. And the hat trick of helpers from Bergeron, the captain. And the Bruins are one game away. Adam Pellick, unfortunately, goes down to injury again. I mean, Nate Schmidt will be allowed back in. He was fully healthy, so it's kind of unfortunate that he was hurt again. If he's proving to be injury-prone, maybe it would be worth trading him at the trade deadline. But again, we're not going to worry about that now. We are focused solely on Game 6, on home ice, the chance to eliminate Montreal right here and right now. Let's do this. First period, and that is not ideal. Brad Marchand scores again, gets the opening goal. DeHarnay, Mateau, and Lekkinen. Jesus Christ, three goals on ten shots against Tuka Rask. And that puts us into a pretty rough situation. But that's only 20. We still have a long way to go. Second period, we start... Uh, English. We start the turnaround. We start to turn it around. Pick your poison. Mika Solomaki gets on the board. We really came back strong in terms of shots now. Out shooting them 26-21. to 21. Am I running out of steam? No fucking way. 
We're just getting started. Third period of game six. We need a goal. That's the most obvious thing I've said this episode. We have a power play. Can we get the goal? We cannot. And as is tradition, if you don't score on a power play, you get scored on immediately fucking after. It it had to happen, right? If we didn't sweep them, it had to go to game seven. An off night for Tuka Rask in the defense. That allows Montreal to extend the series. Shaw and Mitchell score. In the third period, it's a 5-2 victory for the Habs. DeHarnay goes from being the GOAT of Game 5 to the hero in Game 6. And we, good God, we are going to take a swig. We're going to Game 7. Now, I do want to pay attention to the Providence Bruins here because there is a strong chance they could be eliminated in this next game and they are not both teams are going to a decisive oh to a decisive game game seven for the Bruins game five for the Providence Bruins Matt Grizzlick is healthy but we're going to go do we go with Nate Schmidt is the question and I don't think we do I don't think we do. We go with Matt Grizzlick. We get him back into the lineup. And maybe that offensive presence he has can be enough to change this series. The lineups will remain the same. Is that a mistake? It may be. It may not be. Let's find out. Game 7 in Montreal. We go from sweeping them one year to playing them in the first round of the next year, and it goes to a seventh game. Wouldn't have it any other way. First period of Game 7. Shea Weber again with the lone first period goal. And we are down one nothing. Plenty of time on the board. Plenty of time. But we need players to step up. Second period. Patrice Bergeron. The captain. With a huge goal, tied at one apiece in Game 7. Let's do this. Third period, boys. Come on. Early power play for Montreal is killed. We have an early power play. That is killed. Is there going to be a quick goal? There's not. We are halfway through the third. Another power play for Montreal is killed. Another power play for Montreal is killed. Stay out of the fucking box, please. Oh my god, we're going to overtime. Game 7. Overtime. It's the first round. <laughs> Come on. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Are you ready? I don't know if I am. Overtime. Come on, please, somebody, please, Bergie, Pasta, Gallagher, Brendan Gallagher gets the game winner, and Montreal comes back from 3-2 down to take the series in seven games. In the end, we just weren't good enough. It is as simple as as that the lack of secondary scoring for the most part probably a big factor Brad Marsham was fucking incredible man 11 points in seven games pasta was great Bert, I mean that top line was amazing David Krejci three points pretty disappointing from there Solomaki bleed Vitrano and Heinen all but two uh, Zarnik and Achari only a point Polkinen only a point David Backus didn't do anything in five games. That is unreal. Look at what he did last postseason. 19 points in 20 games. Five five games, no points, and was a minus three. When it came down to it, players underperformed. Tuka Rask was great, but the team just didn't click when we needed them to. And we lose in that decisive seventh game. 
Let's find out what happens here with the Providence Bruins against the Hartford Wolfpack. Can they move on? And both teams are out in the first round. God damn, man. That is... Oh, that's heartbreaking right there. That is. The Providence Bruins had a pretty damn strong season, too. So for that to happen is rough. Didn't they win their division title? They did by eight points over Wilkes-Barre Scranton or Wilkes-Barre, Wilkes-Barre, I don't know, who cares, the Penguins. Overall, a disappointing end to both seasons. Like I said, I was happy that we made the playoffs. It would have been nice to beat the Habs, but it did not happen. And now's the time where I get to say, I'll see you in the next episode. That's right. We will not find out who wins the Stanley Cup until the next episode just before we get into the draft. I'm going to save that. I'll get you guys a look at the playoff bracket. But, of course, we'll see who wins. We'll take a look at the awards, and then we will get into the Season 3 draft. Did I say Season 2? No, no. yeah, this will be our season. This will be our second draft is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it will be our second draft. Dallas beat St. Louis, though, in 5. Minnesota over Nashville. Calgary over Edmonton. San Jose over L.A. So Minnesota against Dallas in the second round, San Jose and Calgary. And on the east side, New Jersey and the Islanders, Ottawa and Montreal. God damn. Two big upsets, Pittsburgh and Columbus both go down. We will find out the outcome of the Season 2 playoffs, like I said, in the next episode. Until then, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button to help support my channel, you guys. Like I said, and like I say in every video, you guys have been amazing lately. Thank you so much. And keep doing what you're doing. It has been uh, unbelievable. Uh, and of course, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to continue following this series and others. It ends in disappointment, but I'm looking forward to the next one. And I will see you guys then.